Are we live? Let us see. It says it's still offline. Okay, I am still offline. All right, am I heard, guys? Uh, you know, this uh, program Rumble is not really. Uh, what I'm used to, as you know, so we have to have patience with it a little bit. Uh, let me know, please, if you have a problem from your side. Is my voice coming good? Am I heard? All right. So as you see, we have to go and rumble today, even though I wasn't planning for uh, for such a thing. But uh, YouTube gave us a strike and did not even let me post anything in that account. So I said it's okay, you know. Uh, they don't want me to go there. We can we can go around. We did not. We have not been here for a while. And actually, I said to the Muslim, "You are a, you are just a bunch of Abdul." I mean, here are people they can make donation to me. You see, I don't come here. If I'm a person who is after money, I will not. I will not even go to YouTube. Last time I was here, maybe it was three, four months ago, right, or even more. I'm not sure. Here, people they can donate to me. Still, I don't come here. I go to YouTube where people don't, cannot even donate. But as long as you are the one who forced us to come here, okay, deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. Yeah, five months ago, exactly. So, you know, like someone else actually, if he is trying to make uh, some income, he will not go to YouTube, he will come here. And the funny, actually, even here, you can donate even after the life, you know, like we are done, you watch my video, you can send donation. So it's totally different system from YouTube. But I don't come here because this is not what I'm here for. And, uh, you know, the, the donation is not uh, my target. But anyway, <clears throat> so thank you, Muslims, for bringing us here because here people can support more. Today, our topic is about this Abdul. One of you, he mentioned to me his name. And he said, if you can get this uh, potato busted. You know, those Mohammedans, they always, you know, you know, like there is a statement always we say, Islam without lies dies. And if you are first time listening here, you'll be the judge. Is it true that Islam without lies dies? Is it? Let us see together if this is true or not. So this is a teenage girl. She called this guy, and now he is going to answer her questions. So supposedly she have a sister who become a Muslim, according to the caller. And now she is calling her sister. She asked her to call, and, you know, uh, let us hear the conversation. Me and my sister were both okay. born into Christianity. And okay. we basically both, well, I believe that Christianity is the way. And I have a bunch of questions about Mus like um, Islam and how to disprove it. My sister is the one who directed me to you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess I should clear? start off with questions. But wait, uh, yeah, yeah, because you see, I couldn't answer you. Said, is okay. the video clear? You said you believe Christianity is the way. Yes. And you believe Islam is false. And then you have evidences to show why Islam is false or questions that you want to present yeah. that your sister is not able to answer that you're going to present. Is that correct? Yes. Would you like to ask your questions first or you would you like me to ask you something about what you said? Which one, which way would you um, want to do it? I would like to start off first. Okay, go ahead. My first thing yes. is, um, why yeah. did Muhammad, uh, get a, like a five-year-old cell to him and then he raped her when she was nine? Uh, okay. The, when there's a whole video. You. Okay. That's incorrect first. There's no rape mm -hmm. that ever took, took place. We don't, we don't believe that this is true. Uh, Guys, he don't believe that this is true. Did you hear this is come back? She said to him that his his prophet he did marry Aisha when she was five, and he did 
uh, uh, have sex with her when she was nine. He said, we don't believe this is true. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? How in the world someone, he will say such a thing when this is all over the internet, you can search for it and you will find it in two seconds. It's not true that he's a prophet, he have sex with a child and he did have sex when she was nine years old. Let me play again this part to be sure that we heard him right. Okay, go ahead. My first thing yes. is, um, why yeah. did Muhammad uh, get a, like a five-year-old cell to him and then he raped her when she was nine? Uh, okay, the, when there's he was a whole video. You. Okay, that's incorrect first. There's no rape mm -hmm. that ever took, took place. We don't, we don't believe that this is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there is no nothing in the Quranic or Islamic text that says that. That's completely inaccurate. Mm -hmm. But it's a common. Hmm? Oh no no no! I was just saying yeah. Like yeah. So like that, in... that is just a common claim uh, spread by uh, Christian missionaries. It's a common claim spread by Christian missionary. Let us see if this is true or not. If it's a actually, you know what? Why I want to even show you the hadith. He told her in the video. I did not watch of it. I watched in the beginning. He told her he have a video speaking about that, but he just said it's not true. It would be an, actually an insult in my own personal uh -huh. opinion to claim that two billion people around the world follow a man that they know raped a five year old. I, I think that there is no way two, two billion they want to follow a man he raped five years old. There's no way. And now the Muslims are two billion. Two months ago, there was 1.8. Three months ago, they were 1.6. So like every two months, they are like uh, uh, 200 millions. We are laying eggs here. So there is no way. And instead of saying to her, okay, can you give me the reference for what you are saying? Do you have a proof? Do you have an evidence? He is saying there is no way Muslims will follow such a man. But the same guy, he mentioned actually, and that's why I looked in his channel for a video about Aisha. He himself, he mentioned that he spoke about this topic in details. Anyone who believes that is insulting all Muslims and insulting his own intelligence. To oh. think that those people do not have the capacity of, of basic morality to not follow an individual like that. So I think that. Do you think those people, they have uh, no the capacity and the morality to follow such a man like that? Do you think so? Yeah, we believe so. This is what you are. Aren't you a person who believe if you kill somebody, Allah will give you endless penis? Aren't you the one who believe in all the stupid things like the sunset and miracle water and beating your wife and having more than wives and secret wives and you can lie to your wife and now you are talking about morality? But let us continue and see what he will say. Please guys, share the link. As you see, not many people know that we are here in Ramble. For sure, he will have a very lower viewer than usual. Usually by now we will have a thousand. And uh, I see the chat is very slow. I'm, I don't know if this is from Ramble or from your side. I hope everything is going fine from your side. So this is insulting. It's not true. That's an insult by itself if you actually think about it. But yeah, yeah. no Muslims believes this nonsense. But if you'd like an, a, a detailed answer to that qu question, there is a whole video on my channel. It's, like, it's titled, Why Did Your Prophet Marry a Young Girl? Yes. And you're welcome to watch that video. It's like a 17 minute, I believe, video where I go into like an extensive detail because it's an issue that needs ex extensive detail and explanation. So, okay, let's go to the video he mentioned and he showed in the screen to see the extensive details. In fact, in that video, he agreed. <laughs> Listen carefully, Allah. That I see Christian makes in the term of morality against Muslims is the morality of Aisha's age. And mm -hmm. I'm, I apologize if my pronunciation is wrong. <laughs> it's, just, it's, uh, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. What is, You're being what, very respectful. We appreciate that. But for me, I don't get offended at all. So don't worry about that. Yeah. You don't get offended at all. You know, Muslim, they never get offended. Are you, are you kidding me? Muslim get offended? You don't get offended. You can say whatever you want. They are very friendly. Uh huh. Okay, so now what will he say in this uh, video? Let us see. Um, what would your response to the morality of Aisha's age be? For me, it's just a question. When someone asks me, did Prophet Muhammad get married to Aisha specific, this specific age? I say, I say yes. Because for me, it's a normal thing. For me, like the person who makes the claim is the person who's supposed to explain why it's immoral. So from an Islamic paradigm, our morals are from the Quran. 
what happened is not against the Quran, the teaching. What happened was cons consensual. It was with the agreement of, of her father. She lived uh, 50 years before the Prophet ﷺ. She married no one after the Prophet ﷺ. She never spoke ill of the Prophet ﷺ. She had all chances to do so if, if she was being abused or anything. Like they tried to put it, right? Point is, from our perspective as Muslims, we don't have any issues with that. So we don't feel like we need to just, for me personally, and, and I think Muslims should be like that. And that's what I advise Muslim presidents. It's just we got nothing. So why you don't tell the girl, first of all, why you don't mention the specific age? Why you don't mention that? Why he didn't say, okay, we don't have a problem. You know, he just, he did not mention the age. You remember, you, know, you notice here, he skipped the word age. He just said the age, I mean, the word age, but he did not mention what age she was. Uh, and he said, I don't even know why this is, will be a problem. Well, the man is 54 years old, and the girl, she is five, going in her six. Six in the Islamic calendar is five in our calendar. So he don't find a reason why this is a problem. What is the problem? But when he spoke to the girl, he did not answer her. He didn't say we don't have a problem with having sex with the children. He said this is not a true. He denied totally and he referred her to watch this video. Dodging the question she mentioned and saying this is not true. And now he is in details, he is explaining what happened. Let us see. Nothing to justify anyways, you know why do I need to justify something that happened in uh, that is not wrong but when the, some why we need to justify something happening is not it's not wrong well if it's not wrong why are people asking you how come he married her at such an age so what he is saying to you that we Muslims we are followers of a pedophile and this is not wrong Someone comes to me and he claims, okay, this is wrong, then he's got to provide his moral compass. If that person is a Christian, like imagine if somebody have sex with a child, we have to prove why it's wrong. It's not like something everybody agree upon. He is a challenge in you. If you are the one who brought this a challenge, well, you are the one who have to prove to me why it's wrong. Well, we can prove it so easy. You see, even animals, they don't go after baby animals. A dog, he have a better sense than your prophet. A dog, he smell the female heat. He smell that she is ready. He don't go after little puppy to have sex with. So even animals don't go after babies. Your prophet is 54 years old man. Aisha, she is not only not mature, she is unaware what sex is about. There's two questions we need to ask to this pedophile because simply he's supporting pedophile. And obviously he don't have a problem with it. When a girl, she, when we say we want to marry a girl, you ask the Muslim, they say that the, 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 the female should agree. Ask any Muslim. They say to you that her father should ask her if she agree. All right, let us go with this rule. How in the world, the father of Aisha, he will ask Aisha at the age of five if she agree. He just said that her father agree. He didn't say Aisha she agree. So we take a child and we throw it in the bedroom of a very old man compared to her. He's 54 years old. He is a grand grandfather of her. And she has no idea why she is going there. And nobody asks her, do you like to go there? And if we ask her, do she knew even what marriage means? Someone she is six years old. So he's asking you to prove the reasoning to deny why a child should not have sex with Muhammad. Do you see why this religion is a religion of pervert? 
and why you did not say the same answer here to that girl there why you said just go watch the video there to avoid the embarrassment because now what you want to obviously she don't like what she, what what your prophet did she's against having sex with the children even though she is a teenage but she understand so now and instead of saying to her well there's no problem for us to have sex with the children you say go and watch the video and in this video you say what is the problem what is the proof that having sex with the child is not a good thing so if we ask this man if somebody come to your house and he wanted to have sex with your daughter you call it marriage so he decided to marry your daughter are you saying to us you have no problem if a 54 years old go to bed with six years old girl you can go right now and search in case you don't have a daughter at that age uh, search for six years old and you will see what we are talking about so what is the problem he have no problem he said the question to you is this as a christian where is the age of marriage in the bible in in terms of the christian bible i don't know i never made it full well actually i don't think those even the one according to him they are christians uh, the bible from the beginning god he created adam and eve and eve was a woman he created for him a woman not a child so the first man had a first woman not a first child so what the age of uh, of eve was an age of a woman and a woman when the second we say a woman we are talking about a person or a man either way a person who is sexually and mature sexually he is able to have sex and maturity he is mature enough to know what sex is at least at least so when a when a, a teenage <coughs> she she is a growing in age she start feeling the same as a, a, a female or male doesn't matter both they have an increase in the hormone their voice is a change the, the 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 female she will start having breast uh, her size will be different her voice will be different she will start soon would have her period and the boy will have the same symptoms for sure except the period so he will have a, a different voice from a voice of a kid to a voice will change to a voice of a man uh, and he will have hormone and he will have a growing hair around his a private area and uh, uh, he will you know start uh, experiencing you know without saying details we know what we're talking about so what do you mean what is the age of marriage the bible all of it speak about the man he leave his parents and he will become a god with his women not a child so he dodged the, the question he throw it away and now he is a questioning you what is the age of marriage in the bible the age in the, of the marriage in the Bible is so clear. She have to be a woman. And to be a woman, that means she have to have menstruation. She have to be able to, uh, uh, to practice sex without being harmed. And she enjoy it. And she know what it is. Same for the male. You don't go with a child he is six years old. Like if we ask him right now, what if we bring Muhammad at the age of five or six and we ask Khadija to marry him when she was 54 years old? Is that acceptable? Just think about it. We just switch the male to a female. So now Khadija is 54. Muhammad is six years old. Is it acceptable for the Muhammadan that a child he is six years old will go to bed with the woman she is 54 years old and what he can do there exactly so in order to admit you know that to avoid admitting that this is a filthy religion is he start questioning you like what is the good age To make it simple, in order for a man 
to have a sexual desire to a female she have to be attractive do we agree otherwise why I see her attractive I mean she have to be sexually attractive and what what, what make a female sexually attractive if she is so small she is so tiny she is a child how that make her sexually attractive excuse my language do she have even breast no can her private part even use for sex he will kill her in the best scenario he will destroy her ability to have kids in the future when she grow and become a woman so the question is not what what the age you know the question is what kind of a pervert defend the pervert and he enjoy and he have a desire for a child she is not desirable so to make it simple let us say there is someone she is very young still in age <clears throat> but let us say she grow faster than some the other girls she became tall she have a breast she have her menstruation but at least you know she can handle sex and she look like a woman maybe she have a brain of a child still but in the worst scenario still she is desirable we are taking it now just from the side of the man so what muhammad he saw with or in this child to make him desire this child if we go in the hadith you will find that the mother of Aisha and this is when she is nine sorry when she is six still she sent her to Muhammad but now she is not ready for sex but what she did in order to send her to Muhammad let me show you read with me carefully and see the pervert Muhammad this is Aisha and this is an authentic <laughs> reference again guys if you have a uh, account in a Twitter etc please share the link with everybody of your friends and tell them about us going live here uh, my mother my mother intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the messenger but nothing which she desired benefited me till she gave me cucumber with a fresh date to eat then i gained as much weight as she desired so we can tell that Aisha when she was sent to Muhammad she was so small so tiny physically am I heard guys am I heard Somebody saying no sound? All right. Try to change your browser if you have a problem with your browser. Uh, so as you see here, she is so small physically, which means there is no way a man he can desire her in a sexual way unless he's a bit of fire. It's very obvious, you know, like why, why even scientifically they call somebody desire children pedophile? Why even this word is existed? This is the normal thing. The reason we call a person pedophile because he is not doing what men do. He's not normal. He is sexually perverted. 
and he enjoys sex with the children more than women. In fact, the pedophile, the re one of the major reasons for them to like to have sex with the children is because they can control them so easy. And they enjoy their physical structures like a toy. He's mentally ill. Pedophile is a kind of a mental illness. And now the Muhammadan, they are trying their best to duct tape, and suddenly it's your duty to prove it's wrong. Why it's wrong? But if we ask this is come back, are you willing to make your sister or your daughter marry someone she is she is six years old and he is 54 years old? I assure you he will never let that happen. But in order to defend the cult of Muhammad, they are willing to duct tape anyone. Number two, not only Aisha physically is not ready, she is still a child mentally. We have tons of hadith about Aisha playing with her dolls. If Aisha, she is mature or in the age of maturity, why she is playing with her dolls? Aisha now she is in the house of her husband and now she is almost 14 years old. Yet she is playing with dolls. Let me find you some reference. <clears throat> Look at the wife of Muhammad. She called her dolls my daughters. Sound very mature. I used to play with dolls when I was, by the way, translation is false. I cannot believe it how they lie in translation. She did not say I was playing with dolls. She said I was playing with my daughters. I was playing with the girls. The girls here is the dolls. Because she's playing not with them, she's playing the dolls, like she, the dolls is the object. And then the prophet, he allow my friends who they are in her age to come and play with her. She is now in the house of Muhammad, still she is playing with dolls. As you see, all those are authentic hadith. Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, she play with boys too. Read carefully what Aisha she is saying. The messenger of Allah married me when I was six, and he did f her when she was nine and i used to play with dolls why i should she with that dolls with the rest of the story i mean what the, what the relationship between the dolls and mary and muhammad i should stand as that she is just a baby i was playing with my dolls so now i she is a wife but she did not know what wife mean and she is playing with her dolls. And look how many times this story is repeated. All of this is authentic.
why the wife she is allowed to play with the dolls? Because simply she is just a child. She is just a child. And she is a playing as a children's day play. When Aisha, she was taken to a Muhammad house, she was playing with the swing. Her mother, she brought her and she prepared her and she combed her hair. <laughs> and she prepared me and she decorated me, which means she put makeup on her. Then she brought me to the Messenger of Allah. The wife in the wedding day, she is playing in the swing. <laughs> huh? And she took her to him, by the way, when she was six. In the translation, tried to fool you. She was with Muhammad House when she was six. During the time from six to nine, Muhammad could not have sex with her because she is too small. But when she was six, he had intercourse. The other word, he raped her. So from six to nine, he was molesting her. All those stories in front of us, speaking about Aisha playing with dolls. And Aisha, uh, according to this guy, Aisha, she never complained about Muhammad. How truthful that is. In fact, we have a clear evidence from the Quran that Aisha, she had a big problem with Muhammad. And the problem was so big to the point that Allah, he threatened Aisha and Hafsa for they made a, let us say, opposition front against the pervert Muhammad because the whole story is about women. Instead, he want to have sex with more women or more children too. Uh, so if we go in the Quran, You will find the story where it says, in chapter 66, verse number four, uh, four the Quran is written Aisha and Hafsa, they have to repent and they should stop opposing and compl complaining about Muhammad. We heard this guy saying that Aisha, she did live 50 years after Muhammad. Imagine 50 years after the husband. This is how, how, how young she is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is what he said. So here you will see that Aisha and Hafsa, they have a big problem against Muhammad. To the point it's needed to involve Allah and Jibreel and all the angels to protect him and all the believers to protect him from Aisha. So how he said to us that Aisha was not complaining, she had no problem with the Prophet, she never said he abused her. And not only that, you will find here that Aisha, she was threatened to be divorced and Muhammad will exchange the wives. She is threatened that Muhammad is going to exchange. He will dump her. And this is in the Quran. This is not in a story said by this or that. This is a Muslim story cannot deny. This is supposedly the holy book of the pervert Muhammad. So if Muhammad and Aisha, they have no problem during their lifetime, so what is this? 
If you change the translation, by the way, like now you don't see anything about who is talking. The Quran is a very, very stupid book. But if you change the translator, if you go to different translation, let us say Hilali and Khan, you will see they will add for you more details to explain to you. Like here, they don't even say the name of the wives still. Oh, here, actually here. Go back. So if two of you, wives of the Prophet S.A.W., namely Aisha and Hafsa, turn in repentance to Allah, between two brackets, it will be better for you. Your heart are indeed inclined. So he's accusing them even to be not the believers no more. To oppose, so in, inclined between two brackets, to oppose what the prophets S.A.W. like. But we heard the guy saying that his wife, she never complained and she had no problem from her husband. This is Quran. And remember, the history of Muhammad is written by Muhammadans. In fact, all the Hadith book says anything is not suitable to or be fit to mention about the Prophet, we took it off. Not long time ago, Erdogan, the filthy president of Turkey, he had a big conference. And the purpose of it is to filter the hadith. So after all, the filtration done through history, until now they keep filtering. They want to take it off. Aisha, she'd been beaten by her father in the front of Muhammad. And Aisha was beaten by Muhammad himself. Let me see if I can find this hadith in English. I remember those hadith is the one like let's say escape by mistake from the filter machine. Remember the one who's writing history about Muhammad is those who are willing to kill you for the sake of Muhammad. So they will not mention something sound bad about Muhammad. They mention things which they believe it's fine. If they believe it's bad, they will not, you know, they will not let it happen. He says, So he hit me, he hit me, Muhammad, he hit Aisha in her chest, and that hurt her. Aisha, she never complained about Muhammad. This is what he said. He hit her. He hurt her. And this is long after Muhammad is dead. I don't think she would dare to speak about it if he's alive. Remember, Aisha, she don't dare to describe Muhammad as a bad person because she will lose her position. The reason the Muslims, they even obey her because she is the wife of Muhammad. So if she will start bashing Muhammad, what do you think the Muslim will do? They will kill her. So she will lose all the respect. She will lose the protection. And maybe she will be raped. So there is no way Aisha, she is going to bash Muhammad. Yet, Aisha, she confirmed that Muhammad, he did beat her. In fact, I'm looking here to see where is the part where it says she did, he did beat her. Uh, I didn't see it. Uh, ah, he gave me a shove in the chest that hurt me and said, You thought that Allah and His Messenger will not be and will be unfair to you? <laughs> we beat the women or the child and we tell her we think he was not going to be fair. And obviously, from the conversation, Aisha obviously she is not satisfied and she is complaining about Muhammad being fair. 
otherwise why what 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 make this conversation happen in fact he says you are the you were the black sheep the black sheep i saw in front of me she said i said yes she said he gave me a shove in the chest that hurt me and said you thought that allah and his messenger would be unfair to you is that the sound of a person who is being fair by hitting his wife? Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad is a pervert. So once she said to him, You are the one who claim that you are a prophet. Why she said that to him? Obviously, Aisha, she don't believe Muhammad is a prophet. She was able to knew him very well, that he is a scam. You who, the one who claimed that you are a messenger of Allah. So what Aisha, she was doing when she said that, she was complaining about his low-class behavior. Remember the guy in the video, he said, Aisha, she never complained about Muhammad. Let us see the find of the hadith about Aisha. Uh, where is the hadith? Okay, let us see this one. Maybe you cannot find it. Let us see. I'm just trying to find the hate for you. <clears throat> All right. I don't like to mention something without giving reference. You know, let us see if we can find this one here in the English. There's many versions of the same hadith, you know. I have the hadith already in Arabic, but I want to find it in English. Mm, okay. If we could not find it in English, then we have to use Google Translation. Looks like it's hard to find it in English. All right. In the same hadith, actually, it says that Muhammad, he did hit her in her face, hit her hard in her face. Falatama. All right, we will use Google Translation, what we can do. Mm -hmm. 
The website I'm looking at have tons of hadith and that will make you confused which one if you open it. So I'm trying to find a website which will give us just one hadith. You click translate and you translate it. Oh, it's in here. Now, for sure, they will say to you this the hadith is da'if. Let us, let us use this page here. Okay. Uh, I, this is the only page I found. There's, uh, the hadith is located in like one, one hadith only in the whole page. So, this is the name of the book. And the same hadith is located in, in many books, not necessarily here. But it does the job. And we use Google Translation, as you know. Why Google Translation is not working? Uh -huh. uh, okay, hold on. We need to open Google Translate, uh, Google Browser. This is not Google Browser. Let us get Google Browser. I will post the link for you first. You can open it from your side. I see the number of people who they are here still low. Obviously, not too many people they are joining us, but what we can do. Um, let me open uh, Google browser. So we can use Google translation. So now this is Google browser. If you click at the link I post for you, you can translate using your Android phone. Uh, if you have Apple, you can do that same too. Let us use Google translation, translate to English. For sure you can translate to the language you wish, you know, whatever your language is. And here you will see a big story about Aisha. And then how Muhammad, he did hit her. Uh, maybe we should look for where it says my face in English. Here we go. He, you know, he, so he approached me and he slapped my face. Do you see it? And if you read the whole story, you will see how embarrassing it is. Even Aisha, she said to him, "You are the one. You and you are the one who claimed to be the messenger of Allah. You. She was making fun of his behavior. So." Here you will notice either Aisha she is immature, saying a stupid thing as a kid, or she is immature. Either way, it's a slander to Muhammad. If Aisha is mature and she is making such an accusation, that means her herself, she don't believe in Muhammad to be a prophet. If she is like a grown woman saying that, that means she don't believe. She, she understands very well Muhammad is a fraud. Because there's no way Aisha she will say, Don't you claim that you are a messenger of Allah? You claim. Do you see the word claim? If I say to you, I'm a prince, and then you say to me, You claim to be a prince, that means you don't believe me, correct? Are you with me? You don't say to somebody, You claim 
unless you are accusing him that he is not what he claimed. So she accused him to be a false prophet, and Muhammad in return, he did slap her face. The guy was saying to us that Aisha, she lived many years after Muhammad. She never complained, she had no, no problem. And remember, this is history written by Muslims. This is after the filtration. So after all the filtration done by Muhammadan, we have those stories. So what we we don't know what is the you know what really happened. Now we have verses from the Quran speaking about Aisha and Hafsa. They go against Muhammad and Allah Himself supposedly threatening them. Does it sound like a happy marriage? Why a woman? She is going to make all this trouble to her husband, to her amazing husband. Why she will be threatened by so-called God if everything is fine. To the point he threatened them, he is going to exchange them. What kind of a threat this threat is? You know, if Allah is God, and then the news of the fight went all the way to heaven in the seven galaxies. <laughs> How big the fight is. You know, fights happen between like between walls in a house. Wife and husband. I mean, in order to the, even the neighbors to hear it, you have to be very loud, right? You have to be loud, breaking dishes, breaking windows. Uh, screaming so loud, you know, beating the women, the women go out in the street, you know. So there's a scandal, right? So what kind of fight which reach all the way to so-called God and how small it is to the point Allah and the believers and the angels and everyone in the world is going to be against them. And not only that, actually, you will notice that the Quran here accusing Aisha that she is a whore. According to Muhammad, a woman, she is not obedient to her husband. She is a whore. In the front of you, does it say Allah will exchange you with women who they are surrendering to Allah, believers and obedient to Allah? Does it say that? Does it say? Allah will change them with what? Allah will exchange Aisha and Aisha and Hafsa with women who they are obedient. That means Aisha, she is not obedient. Do we need more proof? <laughs> are you with me? When a wife and the husband will reach the point we say she is not a believer, look, he will exchange them with the women she is a believer. And women who they are obedient. And women who they are repenting and they are worshipping Allah. A woman who they are fasting. That means all those things Aisha is not doing. And yet the potato in the video he claimed that there is no evidence that Aisha she was complaining. Well, your God himself is making a big noise about how bad she was. And remember, this is a Quran made by Muhammad. Correct? This Quran is made by Muhammad. So now Muhammad fabricating verses, claiming that his God is giving him this, uh, this, uh, this verse so he can defeat his wife. Who is, she is not obedient. She is not a believer. She is not a good person. She is not even fasting. And he wants to exchange her with better women. So here you ask yourself the question, what Aisha did to the point this a threat and describing her that she is not a Muslim? Look carefully, read carefully. It may be if you if he divorced you, and by the way, the one who made this verse, anyone remember who? Anyone remember who? Who is the one who made this verse? That, guys, if you can make a comment in my page in YouTube, please make comment 
and tell people to go to Patreon to join us in Rambo. Tell them a Christian Prince cannot make a comment here and tell them to join us. And try to post even a link. I don't know if that will go through. Uh, because me, myself, I cannot post a comment, even in my channel. Can you believe it? Yeah, YouTube love me. Right. Uh, so uh, make make a comment. Tell people, hey, Christian Prince is live on Ramble. And uh, you can type the name of the title, search for it. Or the best way, go to Patreon. Click at the last video he posted, the last link. So people can join us. Most of people do not know that we are here. Uh, now, I know that uh, Rumble is not, uh, uh, you know, as good as uh, YouTube. YouTube, I think, is faster, like the chat is faster, it's easier. Uh, some people in some countries don't have ability to view Rumble. But I think all of us, you can use a software to go through this and you can watch it. Uh, Always take a note about this chapter in the Quran because it's a clear evidence that Muhammad, he was not a person who was not, he, he was not a good husband, number one. And the Quran saying that the, the wives were not good wives. And that will lead us to a bigger problem. Anyone knows what I'm going to talk about? Anyone knows? What is the bigger problem will lead us now? Who knows? Join you in Patreon? No, not join me in Patreon. Tell people to click at Patreon so they can click at the link and come here. And instead of explaining to them how to find me, where to find me, tell them go and click at the last link uh, Christian Prince, he posted in Patreon, his page in Patreon. And that's it. You know, like you tell them a ramble, you cannot post a link for the ramble. YouTube usually don't allow that. So just tell, tell people that you, you can find him. And the easiest way, go to Patreon, click at the last video he posted for ramble. As easy as that. So what that will lead us, by the way, there is something I... I I hope some of you will remember what we taught you before. There's something big problem now. So what does it mean that Aisha is a bad person and Hafsa is a bad person? Anyone remember? Let me help you. Isn't it the Quran says that Allah will marry bad women to bad men and bad men to bad women? Actually, the Quran doesn't say bad women. Khabithat. Khabith is not a bad, like evil, you know, wrongdoer, criminals. <clears throat> so if you go in the Quran, <laughs> You will find this verse, chapter 24, verse number 26. Corrupt women for corrupt men, and corrupt men for corrupt women. Good women for good men, and good men for good women. Do you understand now what happened? That means that Momo is Khabith, exactly, which means he is a corrupt man. So, because the Quran is so clear, she is not obedient. If you ask any Muslim, a woman, she is not obedient. What does that mean? She is a bad woman. She's corrupted. She is not a believer. That means she's corrupted. She is not fasting. This is what the Quran is saying. The Quran is speaking about Allah will replace Aisha and Hafsa. With women who do the following, who repent, they are obedient to Allah, obedient to the Messenger, they worship Allah, they are sincere, and they are fasting. Which means all those things Aisha is not, Aisha and Hafsa. Are you with me? 
Aisha and Hafsa, they have nothing to do with those descriptions. Then if we go to the Quran, the other chapter, the one we are reading right now is chapter 66, verse number 4, 5, 6. If we go to the other verse here, chapter 24, verse 26, the Quran confirmed that there's a destiny made by Allah. It's a destiny, just to make it simple for you. When he say corrupt man for corrupt women, what does that mean? That means he, Allah, he set a destiny that bad women, they will marry bad men only, and bad men will marry bad women only. And he set a destiny that good women, she will marry a good man only. Are you with me? And here you see that investigating the sexual life of Muhammad, we were able to see that Muhammad and not only is a pervert, he's a bad husband, the wife, she's a bad woman, the wives, all of them, they are bad women. And not only that, the Quran confirmed that they are corrupt women and corrupt men. All of this from evidence in front of you. We did not add anything from our words. And you know that this is a statement, by the way, proving that the one who made the Quran is a donkey. And I'm sure you agree with me. How many good women they marry a bad man every day? Every day. How many the opposite? How many good men marry, marry a bad woman every day? Is it true that God made bad women marry only bad men? Is that true? This is absolutely false. We know that. So the one who wrote the Quran is an idiot and he's a stupid. Yeah, I think Alfred, he can do that because he's an admin in my page in YouTube. So as you see, all things lead us to one, one reasoning that the one who made the Quran is a donkey. Or this is, a, this is a false argument to say that bad women marry only bad men. And bad men marry only bad women. Reality says way the opposite. There's always good man, he marry a bad woman, or the opposite, a good woman marry a bad man. Destiny is not exist in this case. That Allah he destiny a bad man to marry only a bad woman. And Allah destiny that bad women will marry only a bad man. And Allah destiny that a good man will marry only a good woman. And Allah destiny that a good woman will marry a good man. This is absolutely false. And actually, the proof in front of us, Muhammad and Aisha, Muslim, they say Muhammad is a good man. Who's going to question if Muhammad is a good man or not from the Muslim? Nobody. Okay. So if Muhammad is a good man, how come Aisha, based on the hadith and in the reference in the Quran, she is a bad woman? Huh? Like many people, they are watching actually, but maybe do not know how to join the chat. Uh, you can click at the chat uh, just to show you how the chat work. You can, uh, by the way, there's always a confusion about uh, uh, a ramble. When we go live, before we go live actually, enter the info just to show people how it works. Enter the info of my, you see my name here? Usually underneath of it, you will see a, a clock, a countdown clock under the name. It shows you that a Christian, oh sorry, Arabian prophet, he will go live uh, after an hour or two or etc. So there's a clock. It shows you in the corner. Now we don't see it because we are live on air. But if we are not live on air, you will see that instead of those number three, four, six, those are the ones watching right now. You know, most of people do not know I'm here. So usually in that corner, you will see a countdown with the clock to stand you when the life will start based on your time. Because remember, your location, you know, every one of us location has changed. So maybe in my time is going to be seven and your and your clock is going to be say six and your his clock says two a.m. So depending on your location. So underneath here, always when you go before you click at the chat, you will find the countdown clock. 
Now to join the chat, there's a there's a bomb here. It says a chat. You click in it, and you will be able to go to the chat. And we are now in the chat. This is why I see that only a few people they are joining the chat, even though it says way more they are watching. Just to let you know. So next time we go live, because obviously we have to use uh, Ramble more uh, from now on for some time. Do we have any Mohammedan? You know, and if this this uh, this guy who he claimed that he can answer people, if he dare, if he dare to have a conversation with me for 15 minutes, I would love to. People would die laughing at him. We did not play the rest of the video, by the way, because we have way more scandals to talk about. But I said, let us, you know, step by step, so we can leave some comment for later entertainment. So to laugh at this cult. So they are proud about a man have sex with the children. We'll be using Rumble until you got uh, YouTube back. We don't know. I mean, YouTube, you see, they give you, uh, they gave me one week strike. Which means after one week I can I can post, but you know it's better not to use the account until the strike is gone. Uh, you know I, I I used to YouTube. You know it's let me deal with it. So we might use the other account, but for now let us use Rumble. What's wrong with Rumble? Maybe actually it's better if we tell people that we are going to be here and get more people here. So you know uh, in case you know like, let us say promote it. This, uh, this uh, chat here, because here it's very hard to flag a video. It's extremely hard, not like YouTube. As you see YouTube, I post a video about a child. Right away, you know, they flag me and they give me community guideline and all the garbage. Uh, <clears throat> so we can, you know, tell people about here. And if we like it, we can stay. You know, me myself, I don't like the chat and rumble. This is one number one issue I have it with this uh, program. I don't like really their chat. You know, uh, I think it's a little bit slow. Uh, and you know, I, I mean, YouTube is way better. However, what we can do, you know, YouTube, they are always against us, and always they side with the devil. What you expect from those atheists? You know, people of San Francisco, you expect them to side with us, right? Yeah, exactly. At least they will not censor me, you know. So maybe, you know, when you guys, you go post around, tell them, post the link, tell them Christian Prince, he will go live next time until further update in Ramble. And let us be here for some time. And same time, let us make the number grow of people who subscribe. How many of you did not subscribe yet to, to this account here? And actually, I will try to change the name from Arabian Prophet to Christian Prince because when you search, you'll find many people, they have account Christian Prince and Ramble. None of them is me. So maybe I will see if I can change it to make it Christian Prince official. I will see if I can do it. Yeah, TikTok is the same. You know, I made a few videos, three, four videos, and they blocked me. The same garbage. You know, I thought that Chinese, they will be like, you know, uh, uh, they will not really care to protect Islam, but it turned to be the Chinese is way more ugly than YouTube. It did not even take three videos, you know. Yeah, the Chinese, they, they took my videos right away. I did not even make three. So they were more aggressive than, uh, and you know, this TikTok for me, myself, I don't like it. It's really horrible. In fact, all those uh, Twitter, TikTok, I mean, they are very stressful and you see it's very ugly stuff there. If you open, uh, if you open Twitter or those TikTok, I mean, your blood will be boiling. Very disgusting. Nothing comfortable really there. For us, we use those platform here for the sake of education. Otherwise, I will never use those. <clears throat> yeah, always, uh, guys, this is why we say always subscribe to Patreon. 
So in case, the easiest way, you go to Patreon, you click at the last link I am posting, then you will know where I am. Patreon is the best way to get updated. You do not need to donate. You do not donate nothing. Make, a, make an account. Anytime I post something in, uh, in Patreon, you will receive an email from Patreon. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, China as a Republic of China, the communist, they are using TikTok to destroy America, to divide America. This was actually, you know, if you remember, we made a video. Uh, we play a video of a KGB agent and he was talking about how to destroy a society. And he spoke about three generation. It takes three generation, an average of 20 to 25 years. And he said America passed that the year a long time ago. And already now what the, what the Soviet Union did you know, the American, they thought they destroyed the Soviet Union and it's gone. But now the Soviet Union, the plan of the Soviet Union is working very well. America is extremely divided. American extremely became pervert. You know, they don't know even what male and female is. Uh, American, they are confused about their gender. It's hard to convince an American what, what is, a, when I say American, I'm, I'm talking about those like, you know, the state of California, the state of New York, the state of chaos, you know. So you are in a time the the Soviet Union, even though it's gone long time ago, they are able really to destroy this country. And another destruction is going to come to the West now is Israel. The stupid Western, they opened the doors for their borders for everybody to come, and then all the madness come with it. Every day you see crazy videos posted, you know. Like, I, I understand sometimes you you find some racist videos against migrant. But I have to say, in the same time, there's a lot of mag migrant, they are criminals. They should not be allowed to enter this land, any land. You know, I, I think even their land, we don't want them. So people, they come to the West. You don't know their history. You do not know their past. They jump in a boat. They come here. They are rapists. They are criminals. They are drug dealers. I saw videos of a man beating a woman. She is pregnant. He's, he's an immigrant. Uh, I saw a woman dragging a woman from the train, dragging her on the floor. And imagine if he is an immigrant and doing this, what he would do if he's a citizen, which means they can still kick him out. So it's really ugly and disgusting. Uh, yeah, when, when uh, YouTube opened my account again, I will make a video and tell people that you, you know, guys go and join me on Ramble. As you know, Ramble is not too much popular like YouTube, but it's okay, you know. At least here you can always, uh, you know, find my videos. I do not need to delete them. Here I will not delete a video. If you go to my videos in YouTube, I, 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 all my videos are gone. I cannot even keep my videos. So if I go here, at least I can keep my videos and you guys, you can come back, watch it anytime. So maybe it's better to start doing more ramble. I did not come to ramble, even though I can here receive donation, as you know. Uh, but because I'm not really after donation, but what we can do. Today, we have no choice. We had to come here. Uh, Anyone have a question? As you see today, we make a little study about Muhammad and his pervert sexual uh, behavior. You can go and do your own research about pedophile. And obviously, Muhammad is nothing but a pedophile. There's no way a man at the age of 54 is going to have a sexual desire to a child she is five years old. In fact, Muhammad, he asked for the hand of a woman, but, but when he asked for her, she was an infant. Imagine, she was an infant. This man is a truly, truly a pervert. If you remember the story of the guy whose name is Jabber, Jabber is a man who did marry uh, a female widow. This man Jabir, he was a terrorist with Muhammad. So he go and he rape, he kidnap women, etc. But he married. 
So he married a woman. She is a widow. Muhammad noticed that this man, he is in a rush to go home. So Muhammad, he asked him, Hey, Jabir, why you are going home fast? Did you get married? The man, he said, yes. Muhammad, because he's a pervert, he said, did you marry a young child or a previously married woman? You see, in the Muslim translation here, it says a virgin or matron. This is not what it says. In Arabic, it says jariya or previously married. Jariya means a child, a young little child. In fact, look here, the same story. Look at the translation. Oh, Jabir, have you married? He said, yes. He said, a virgin or a matron? I said, the matron. He said, why don't you marry a young girl that you may play with her and she play with you? Do you see? Do you see what is interesting in marrying a young girl? What young? We are talking about playing with her. Playing, playing. Do you see the growing man, Muhammad? He liked to play with the children. This is what pedophile is about. They enjoy spending time with the little ones. Why you don't marry a young girl so she could play with you and you play with her? Do you see it? So why is advising him to go after a younger child? So we can play with the girl, play, play. So now I am 54 years old. My name is Muhammad and I am advising. And this is now Muhammad, maybe he's almost in his 60. He is advising his man. Why you marry a widow? This is not fun. This is not fun. You should go and find a child. So she can play with you and you play with her. Then the man he said to Muhammad, Well, I prefer to marry a growing woman because my brother he died and he left for me a bunch of orphans. So I chosen to marry a woman so she can take care of them, not someone in their age. And now we understand very well. That the man he preferred to marry a mature woman, not a child, not someone in their age. Read carefully what this hadith says. My father lied, died, died. Other story says my brother behind uh, left behind seven or nine daughter. I married a woman, the prophet of Allah said. Did you marry, uh, you got married a Jabir? I replied, yes. He asked, is she a virgin or a merton? I replied, she is a merton. And obviously here, the virgin is not a correct translation. How we know from the rest of the story. He said, why don't marry a virgin girl so that you might play with her? But this is not about a virgin. What do you mean virgin? Virgin, she can be 18 years old, it's a virgin. We are talking about uh, a child, not version. This is a false translation. Why you don't marry a child so you can play with her? And how now we will confirm she is a child? Read carefully the rest. So you might make her laugh. Look at this. So you might make her laugh and she make you laugh. Pervert, you know. This man is a bit of file. This is what a bit of file they like. I said, my father died, leaving me seven or nine girls, between two bracket orphans. I did not like to bring a young girl like them. What we call someone is an orphan. Is that a person who is 18, 16, 17, or we are talking about someone is a child? What orphan mean? If you are 20 years old, and your dad and your mom, they die. Are you an orphan? No, you are not. So now he is explaining to him, to the pervert Muhammad, saying, 
Well, you know what? My father, he died, and he had a, a bunch of girls, but they are little, so young. So I prefer not to marry someone in their age. So I married a woman who can look after them, not a child like them. So what the point is? The point he want to marry a woman, and this is why he married a woman, she can look after them. So obviously, she is like them, and obviously, she they cannot look after themselves. Do we agree? Do we agree that this is what it says? He married a woman for the purpose she can look after them. And he said, I prefer not to marry someone like them, which means like the children. Obviously, those children, they cannot look after themselves. Do we need more proof that Muhammad is a pervert? First of all, the man is happy. He is not complaining. What's your business? Why a man, he go to a man says, why? Why you marry a widow? Why? What's your business? What's your business? The guy is not fighting with the wife, is not complaining. He is not coming to Muhammad, asking for advice, nothing. What is the business of Muhammad to ask him? Why you don't marry a child? So the pervert Muhammad, and here, by the way, you will notice that mean that Muhammad, when he married Khadija, wasn't his favorite choice. As you see, Khadija is not a virgin too, and she is not young. She is way older than him. So why Muhammad married her? Based on this story, Muhammad, he prefer a child to be in the bed. It is not his first choice. To have a woman, she is a widow. Do we agree? Do we agree with that? If this is his, if if his favorite choice to marry a woman, she is a widow. Well, then he will not advise the man, questioning his decision. He's saying, "Why? Look, he said, why don't you marry a virgin? Do you see it? A child. Muhammad questioning." The wisdom and the decision of the man, why you why you married a child, why you don't marry a child, which means Muhammad, when he married a woman, she is not a child, he was not doing the right thing. So Muhammad, he married Khadija because she is rich. Otherwise, his favorite is to marry children. When Khadija, she died, Muhammad now have a free, open way. Khadija, she is the one who controlled the money. She is rich. And Muhammad is still now is not making good money. He announced himself as a prophet, yes, but he is not a leader. He is not a, a, a prince of war. He is not a person who have warriors. He is not making money. So he stay under obedience to Khadija until she died. Khadija died. Then the pervert inside Muhammad come out to existence. Other side of him being a pervert, Muhammad even licked the you know licked, licked the faces of young boys, like when Osama, a child, his name is Osama, he fell down in the ground and he hurt himself. So he have blood in his face. What Muhammad he do? He start licking his face with his tongue. Imagine. And he said, "If Osama was a girl, I will dress her until she get married." And he was saying that while he was licking his face. It's very clear Muhammad is a pervert. And then Muhammad, he go to heaven. What he promised his men in heaven? Boys who they are like pearls. And the females in heaven too, they are very young. Extremely young. So when this man here trying to fix the reputation of his prophet, we are laughing horribly about his stupidity. And I hope you guys, you will take the video and cut it short and let everybody put his name everywhere 
and let everybody laugh at their stupid thing. What is the problem? He said, like, what is the what is the proof that this is not right? He's asking the Christian, can you prove that having sex with a child she is six years old is wrong? Fully through it. That's the point. There is no a single verse in the Bible that gives you an age of marriage, by the way. None. So the Bible does not. And Muhammad and he became an expert on single verse in the Bible. In fact, every verse about marriage is saying women, women, women. Are you stupid or what? When we say women or we say man, mean that they are mature. We don't call someone women if she is 10 years old or six years old. We don't call someone a man if he is 10 years old or seven years old. So he says, there is no single verse in the Bible about that. That's a lie. The Old Testament mentioned it, the New Testament mentioned it, and even Adam and Eve, God, he created Eve as a woman. So Adam, he have a woman. He did not have a baby child. In the top of that, you potato. If in the Bible there is no verse saying the age of marriage as you claim, why we don't marry children then? How come we are not perverts like you? Here we go. According to you, there's no age. So now I can go and marry six years old, right? How come Christians don't do that? How come a priest will never allow such a marriage to happen? Instead of saying, well, you know, obviously our prophet, he was, he have something for children. He liked to have sex with the children. He is asking you to prove that it's wrong. If it's not wrong, why scientists they call something called pedophile? Why why we need to give you this term to someone he want to have sex with the children if it's normal? I'll speak about the age of marriage. Number one. Number two, we've got Rebecca marrying Isaac at the age of three years old. She was three. That is a big fat lie, and you are a son of Muta. And I challenge this guy to call me or to let me call him to talk about if she marry. There's nowhere it says that. You know, in the Old Testament, it says that when they send the message, they you know they came to him to Abraham. They said, "Oh, he have a you know uh, a child. She is he have a son and he have a, a daughter, etc." And she was at that time three years old. This is not when he married her. In fact, when he married her, it says. When he sent the messenger to take the bride, it says that she was an alama, a young woman, a virgin, and a young woman. So you are a fraud and you are a liar. They will bring you a, a stupid rabbi. He says, yeah, she was, uh, based on the text, it says three years old. That's false. You know, in the old days, when somebody go from a place to place, the news does not arrive second day. So until this person come to visit Abraham, he told him he have a son and he have a daughter. The daughter, she is a three years old, but this is not when they married. So now they are trying to say that we have a pervert like they're pervert. Let us assume this is true, but that will not change the fact that your prophet is a pervert. That will make two pervert. Are you with me? If this is a true, that he marry Rebecca at the age of three, that means he is an extremely pervert. That will not save the ass of your prophet. So now we have two pervert instead of two, of one. So this is a big fat lie. What about you say to yourself, show me the reference to the Christians where it says that. I can show you a reference from Islamic books. Actually, Mimi Hijab himself, he says there is no age for having sex with the children. In, in, the, in fact, the Quran itself, 
in chapter of uh, 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 divorce, it says, speaking about divorcing children who they never have their menstruation. Chapter 65, talking about divorcing children who they never have their period, read it. And now we are talking about divorce, not marriage. So what the age it was when they, when they married them. We are now in the time of divorce and still they don't have their menstruation. Read carefully. And also there is have not yet menstruation because of their young age. Their period shall also be th three months. So now we are talking about what? We are talking about divorce. Divorcing children. This is wrong. In the story about Rebecca, you will see it says Alama. Alama. Alama means two things in the same time. She is virgin and she is a young woman. And this is the same word used about the prophecy about Mary giving birth to Jesus. That a young woman virgin, she will give birth to a child. The same exact word. So the Muhammad, when he tried to defend, he make up lies to make his prophet look better. But remember that if it's true, which is not, that will not defend Muhammad. That will make this too pervert. Me, myself, if Isaac really married Rebecca at the age of three, I will spit at him. I will not defend him. Do you see the difference between us and those potato Muhammadan? Those potato Muhammadan, they are willing to protect and defend a pervert. For us, if there is one of us is a pervert, we spit at him. It doesn't matter how big he is. All of this is just to justify a filthy man at the age of 54 want to have sex with the children. And then we find that the wives of Muhammad, which nobody knows really how many, even though they say they are 13, but I doubt all the stories about Muhammad coming from Muslims. Never trust a story coming from a Muhammad and about Muhammad. You see, history, if you read the history of the Turkish, are you going to find in the Turkish history that the Turkish did, did genocide against Armenia? No. Correct? If you read the history of Turkey or the Ottoman, written by the Ottoman, do you are you going to find that the Ottoman used to rape, you know, women in Iraq, in Syria, in the, uh, you know, kidnap women, bring them into, you know, the Ottoman they used to walk in the street and when they are in their horses if they see a young woman and they notice she is little pretty they grab her and they put her in the horse and her family will never see her again i have an old woman she told me to me she said that to me not i heard from somebody she said when the old man occupy our land all women, they start wearing burqa. Before the Ottoman, Muslims and Christians don't wear burqa. I said, why? She said, the Ottoman, because the Ottoman, they start kidnapping women. And then, since that happened, uh, we don't allow young girls to go in the street. It's forbidden for young girls to go in the street. Old women who they are in their 60 and more, they are the one who go and do shopping, and even those they are wearing burqa. So wearing burqa became a must during the old man because of their faith. But are you going to find in the old man books about the history of the Turkish 
It says they used to kidnap women from their husbands. If you go in the Middle East, you will find old houses. They have a small, tiny door. The first thing I ask myself, why in the world the door is so small? It's like for a midget, you know, midget? The door is not even for like, not even four foot. So why somebody want to make his house door four foot? I mean, this is stupid. So the wall outside, there's a big wall, high wall made of rocks. And then there's a door. Let me see if I can find you some pictures. Give me a second. And then when I ask why the door is so small like this, they said it is for defense. The old man, they used to attack houses. So now you are not, in, now you are in the house, right? You don't go out. So what they do, they will not leave you alone. They will attack the house and they are still riding their horses because when they are in their horses, it's very hard to fight them. The men, they cannot fight them. So they made the doors so small. So if a Turkish man want to invade a house to rape the women, they have to bend their head down when they enter. And then the ones inside the house, they will cut his head. They will kill him easy. So he cannot enter with his horse and he cannot enter standing. So it was a design for defense. This is how filthy the old man they were. And this is why the Arab, they made a revolution against the Ottoman. In 1916, I think, 1916. So they attacked the Ottoman to free themselves from the rapist. But if we open any book of history of the Ottoman, do you think you will find one line speaking about all the crimes the Ottoman did to people of Iraq, the people of Syria, the people of Israel, the people of Jordan, the people of Egypt, everywhere, or Armenia. Do you know that in Turkey right now, if you speak about the crime the Turkish did in Armenia, you will go to jail and you will stay for up to 20 years at least? Just because you mentioned the Armenian genocide? They killed a million and a half Armenian. So what I'm trying to say to you, that history is always a false history. It doesn't matter who is writing the history. Always history is a false history. Because history written by the victorious, not by the one who lost. To make it simple for you, if Hitler, he won the war, Do you think history will write that Hitler was a bad person? I assure you not. They will say he was a wonderful man. Because who dare to say he is not? Who dare? But now because the man is gone and he lost the war and people who worship him, they are gone with him. So now we can say, we can make a mockery of Hitler. But if Hitler was the winner, who dare in Europe or anywhere else to speak against Hitler? Are you getting my point? History never is honest. The same as the history of Europe right now is not honest. There's no honest history anywhere in the world. Because always everyone, he write history from his point of stand from that history. If we ask the Greek to write their history about the old man, they will give you a different description from what the Turkish will say about what they did to the Greek. Totally different. But is it the same story? No, it's not. So 
always history is manipulated and it's a lie. This is why we cannot trust anything in the books of history. We have to find out ourselves from many resources and sources. Don't take it from one resource. If you go to any uh, university in California, do you think anyone will, let us say, uh, 300 years from now, anyone there will say uh, Trump, he did something good to this country? No. I mean, is it possible that this guy did nothing good to this country? Is it possible? During his time, economy was good, security was way better, uh, the dollar value is so high, the Gaza price is so down, the employment is so good, the border is more secure, but they will never say one good thing about the history of Donald Trump. But they will say to you that Donald Trump was racist. He was a KKK. He hated black people. Correct? This is now, you know, we do not need 10,000 years after Trump. Now they are saying that about the guy. The guy was in the office and still they are making fun of him that he hates Muslims and he is racist. Why? Because he forbids six Muslim countries from entering America. But this is not him. He just renewed the signature of Obama. How come Obama, when he signed the order, which Trump, he just re-signed, he extended. How come when Obama, he signed that, he is not racist? This is why when we read the history about Muhammad, All this history is nothing but a form of corruption. All of it is nothing but a form of corruption because the one who wrote the history is those who they are willing to kill you if you speak against Muhammad. So what do you expect? In order to speak about a history, it has to be written by someone he is not siding with anyone. You don't side. He say things as it is. This is what happened. This is what he did. That's history. But those who believe a man, worship a man, they will never write a true history about the man. And when a Muslim he try to duct tape his prophet, always we need to remember, well, if you give me a story about a one billion human being, they are pervert, that will not change the fact that your prophet is a pervert. But Muslims always, they prefer to speak to someone who is a low IQ. You know, when the Bible speaks about uh, David and the crime David he did, marrying a woman, he sent her husband to war so he can die and he can have a wife. You will notice that those stories written about David in his time, the rabbis, they wrote those stories about David in his time. The same they wrote the stories about Suleiman or Solomon in his time. It is not sugarcoat. They did not cut it off. They put it there as it is. And it says in the Bible that how God he condemned him, how God he punished him. How good God looked down at his behavior. God did not say to him, God bless you for doing that. He punished him. Muslims, because they are following the devil, Muhammad, 
they do anything they don't condemn Muhammad behavior his God did not condemn him for having sex with the children his God according to Muhammad actually the reason he wanted to F Aisha because Allah told him according to Zakir Naik a dream come to Muhammad by Allah telling Muhammad to marry Aisha like if we search right now or Zach and Naik speaking about Aisha marriage Let us see. Zakir Naik, age of Aisha. And not to forget to mention, even they start lying and saying Aisha, she was 18. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Aisha, she was, <laughs> she was 19. <laughs> Any question that most are Aisha, she was, she was what? Listen carefully. Asna alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A few days before, there was an article on 10th of May in Hindustan Times with regards to Hazrat Aisha was 19, not 9. Can uh -huh. you just throw some light on that? 19, she was. This was the question that there was an article that came down. Guys, look, look, look at this. Look at this. A bunch of a chicken in front of him. They are wearing hijab, covering themselves, and look at him sitting there like. <laughs> And the couch is red. <laughs> it's like a porn movie. Yeah, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Her age was 19 and not 9 when she got married. Can I throw some light on that? If you read the hadith in Bukhari, which says, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she was married to the Prophet at the age of 6, and the marriage was consummated at the age of 9. Now, there are many so called modern scholars who feel that it's not possible, that is the reason they try and justify. And they say that actually, the statement is 19, because in Arabic, we add an ashra. So they say the ashra, the 10 is missing. We said 10, 9 for 19. So the 10 is missing, therefore it sounds to be 9. Actually, it should be 19. This is the assumption. But what we believe, that after the Quran, Alhamdulillah, is the saying of the Prophet Muhammad And we have to check whether the hadith is sahih or not. And we realize that this hadith of Sahih Bukhari, and Alhamdulillah, it's authentic hadith. But how can we logically prove today? Now, those scholars, inverted commas, who when they cannot prove logically any part of the Quran and the hadith, they try and say there is some mistake in the assumption and the meaning is different, etc. What we have to realize that first we have to check whether the hadith is authentic or not. If it's authentic, if we cannot prove it logically, we have to feel and we have to understand that the science hasn't advanced so much to try and make us understand that hadith of the verse of the Quran. So based on this again, what I believe that the hadith is authentic and even the age of six and nine is authentic and how to justify that. When I was in the medical college, I passed in 1991 and in the 80s, we were taught in the medical college that a lady, she reaches puberty and adulthood, maturity, at the age of approximately, in India, it is about 13 to 14, 15. In America, it's about 12 to 13. And the age factor of the puberty keeps on changing depending upon the atmosphere, depending upon the surrounding, depending upon the diet, depending upon the climate. Today, medical science tells us <laughs> that closer to the equator, the age of puberty is earlier. Oh. This is one point of it. And today, after science advanced, we have and to... uh, and uh, Muhammad is a is a close to the equator. <laughs> the hadith say clearly that Aisha she never have menstruation. The Quran speak about divorcing children who they have their they never have menstruation. Do you see how they are pervert? They are trying to duct tape and cover. Isn't it this is the Quran speaking about? divorcing children they never have their menstruation because of their young age we are talking about divorcing them now not marrying them so in the time of divorce not in the time of marriage still they have no menstruation 
they are just a bunch of idiot liars. And you know, like they sit in the table like this guy now, and who, as long as there's nobody there to question him and get him busted, he's fine. They put him in the stage. He can say whatever he wants, and nobody argue, and nobody get him busted, so he's fine. Do we have any Muslim would like to say anything? Let me open my Skype. I did not open it yet. Maybe we can get some Muslim who want to join us. Yeah, climate, you know, climate change. <laughs> All right, we have no Muslim. I guess people do not know that we are live in, on air. This is why it's good to have Patreon, and you guys, you better subscribe to Patreon. All right? So always you can be notified in case of some changes. Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? <clears throat> it's okay, people do not know that we are here, but uh, the, uh, the number of people in the chat, it doesn't mean this is the number they are watching. Uh, based on the main page in Patreon, let us see how many. Uh, it says here how many? One point, uh, one point uh, thirteen k. So in the main page, that means not everybody is joining the chat. You know, mostly people do not know really how to join the chat. If you refresh your page, you will see it says here, streaming now one point thirteen k. So the number in the chat is not exactly the number of people who they are watching. The number is way bigger, all right? But you know, uh, Rumble is different from uh, from YouTube. It's a different story. And let us uh, invite people to subscribe, you know, so we can grow Rumble because obviously, uh, you know, YouTube is not, uh, is not that much stable. And anytime they can cancel you. Very hard to join the chat? No. You know, if you look under the video, for those who do not know, if you look under the video, it says chat. Click at the chat. So here, this is the name of the video. We go to the right a little bit. And here, there's an option that says chat. You click in it, you join the chat. Uh, and before you join the chat, like sometimes we are not live yet, under, the, under my name, usually, you will see before we go live, you will see a counter or a countdown clock. It's showing you how much left before we go live. So when you come to Patreon, don't be confused. It's not the same as YouTube. In YouTube, the clock will be showing in the top of the, the, the screen where the, the video will play. In, Patre in, in, in uh, Rumble, is different. It's going to be under my name, as you see there, Arabian Prophet. You go under name, under the name, you will see there, it say uh, uh, a countdown clock. Now you don't see it because we are live. So that countdown clock will show only when we are still offline to tell you how much left for us to go live. And to join the chat, you click at chat here and you will be there, very easy. It's a little bit different from YouTube, but you will use to it and you will learn how to use it. All right? Yeah, you need to make an account, sign in, like anything, even YouTube, like, you know, don't you need to make an account in YouTube? You do. They need to verify your, their account. Yeah, well, if you create an account, they will send you a link to your uh, uh, Gmail account. Oh, go click on it. That will verify it. Very simple. It's not a big deal. And you can always create, uh, you know, a uh, uh, Gmail account just for those things. You know, not necessarily something uh, you use always. Just for YouTube, for chat, for it. I have many emails. 
I, some of them I use them only for junk. Like there is sometimes some places you have to put your email. They insist. So what do you do? You put an email which is made for junk. I made it for junk. You know. Um. <laughs> All right. How do we win this on app? <laughs> I never use the app, really. I don't know. But I think here in the, uh, and not only this, by the way, I notice that, uh, you know, people, they can even make a donation after we finish. Can you believe it? Like in YouTube, people, they can make a donation. I, I don't activate my modernization in uh, YouTube because I don't want them to control me. Uh, you know, YouTube, they use the money uh, to control your mouth. Like, we will strike you. If we strike you, you lose the money. So what people do then, they start watching their mouth. So they, they, will be, well, they will have number one concern. It's not about God or serving God or saying the truth. The number one concern, concern will be how not to make YouTube upset and take our privilege, which is about making money. You know, so then people they will start watching their mouth. They don't say the truth, and <laughs> there's many people they come to YouTube. Actually, they don't care really about God or religion or Christianity or Islam. They are there just for the monetization and the donation. You take the donation off, they will they will not show up without even mentioning names. Many of them they are Christians, not only Muslims. You take the donation off, they disappear. I came here to rumble because I get strike. I cannot even pause there. <clears throat> I mean, we are <laughs> we are in a time where someone like this guy is famous. <laughs> oh boy. Anyone have a question? What is the future of Islam? Well, I believe that Islam will be uh, uh, start demolishing faster and faster. The more education uh, in Muslim countries will be, and the faster, like you see now, the, the, what happened in the last, let's say, 30, 40 years, it was the revolution of oil. Muslims have a lot of money from oil until now. And that made them be able to betray the system in the West and to invade the West, not by sword now, by different method. If you go right now to England, you will find that every single sport team is owned by the Arab. Is that true? You will find stadiums owned by the Arab. You will find that the prince of, uh, the crown prince, the, the king of England, the queen of England, they go and visit those Arabian royal families just for the sake of gifts. You check, uh, Investigation in USC now, as we speak, you find that Republican, Democrat, you name it, Congress, senators, all of them they take a bribe from the Arab. So with their money, they are able to go everywhere. We saw how Qatar bribing European Union Parliament members. Uh, right now, there is a senator. A senator. He is his name is Mendoz, something like this. Uh, you know, they, they, they are investigating him for receiving uh, uh, bribes from Qatar. Uh, Qatar bribe even the FIFA. So they are corrupting every, everything around in the world by their money. It's not a secret. And they made, like, they made the huge donations to Harvard. So now if you go to those universities, you will see a big sections for Islam donated by Muslims. You will find that those universities have a mosque because they are receiving hundreds of millions of dollars. So the Muslims are doing everything they can so they can promote Islam. They go and they buy like a, a piece of land for a hundred million dollar or hundred fifty million dollar in New York, just because they want to build a mosque in Manhattan in a very busy area. So they can promote Islam, a lot of money. But all of this will not change anything. 
they might be able to promote it for some time but when the money shrink Islam will die as soon as the money goes you know if you remember there's a a, a group of African in America it's called the nation of Islam anyone heard of it the nation of Islam right the nation of Islam came to existence for a very simple reason money a guy his name is Louis Farrakhan sponsored by Al-Qazafi Al this is why when they killed Al-Qazafi Louis Farrakhan he went crazy why because that's it the honeymoon is over the honeymoon of al qazafi is over money was coming like rain tons of millions of dollars coming every year from al qazafi what al qazafi he want from those african american he want to create a chaos he want to destroy america and he found his uh, you know his men a group of racist people who believe the white man is the devil and they believe in Islam but they have their own religion they are not really considered as Muslims for Muslims but when you ask Muslims about Muslims in America they count them you know Muslims they count everybody but if you ask them is the the nation of Islam a Muslim they will say no so al Qazafi is the one who established this group in order that one day if something happened if the American they want to bomb him those uh, the nation of Islam they will go by hundreds of thousands in the street striking stopping the war against al Qazafi, and he used them for his own purpose to to sponsor him and what he will lose a check of a uh, million dollar every few months eh, nothing this guy is making billions every month from uh, oil this guy he gave a check to every uh, 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 president or king in Africa just to call him the king of kings right so the Muslims they are investing heavily in the West to promote Islam but that will not work because at the end of the day we have proof that Islam is false and all the money they had will not make Muhammad a prophet and you will notice actually that Western leaders they are in bed with Islam big deal you know George Bush Islam is peace you remember this uh, rabbi what his name Shalomi Shalomi Salami anyone remember the one who debated with Mimi Hijab even the rabbis a Jewish rabbi and there's many of them they promote Islam Why they do that? Because they prefer Islam over Christianity. Islam is not going to take their children to become Christians. Islam is not convincing for the Jews. So what they do? They side with Islam against Christianity. When this guy Shalomi, he debated Mimi Hijab. Is it true that he said Islam is a beautiful? Shamoli, uh, Shamoli, sorry. Is it true? Uh, he said, Islam is beautiful. Why in the world a rabbi wouldn't say that? <laughs> Are you coming to debate Islam or to promote Islam? Are you in TV to prove Islam wrong or you are in TV to defend Islam and to defend Muhammad. This is why Muslims, they love to debate those people because they are idiot and stupid and they find them very much useful. Very useful. What do you want more than a rabbi himself saying to you, Islam is beautiful? I mean, they do not need to debate anymore. 
The Muslims, they love what you just said. They don't want anything more. Islam is beautiful. Do, do, do even a Muslim need to debate anymore? He just said Islam is beautiful. <laughs> so what the problem? Hamas is ugly? <laughs> so they are, those rabbis, they are a fraud to the point they are willing to lie about Islam just to make a point of a view. Political view that he is not against Islam, he is just against Hamas. When all of us we knew that Hamas is Islam and Islam is Hamas, and in fact, Muslims they support Hamas just because of Islam, not because they are Palestinians. Otherwise, Muslims they don't care, you know, who, who we are from. They they care only for one reason: they are Muslims. If the Palestinians they were Hindus, do you think the Muslims will they will they will care? They will not. So those idiots, they promote Islam too. So we have leaders who they are Western leaders, they promote Islam. We have rabbis, as we see, they promote Islam. We have African American who they get paid by uh, uh, Al Qazafi, they promote Islam. They have conferences, a lot of money. I mean, we are talking about a lot, a lot of money. You see, when I uh, when I go and do a seminar, I did seminars in the Philippines. You know, uh, you know, Filipinos are poor people, so and I don't allow churches to collect donations. I pay for my trip, I pay for my airline ticket, I pay for my hotel, I pay for my transportation, I pay for everything. If a Muslim want to do the same, what he pay for? Nothing. Money come like rain from everywhere. If a Muslim they want to buy a mosque or even buy a church which is empty, you know there is many churches, you know, uh, like in the state, uh, a building because churches are a private building. So a group of Christians they open a church and then they differ between them. And they disagree about something, so they decide to sell the property because it's an owned by a corporation of group. Everybody take his money, go home. It's not like an organized church, like the Catholic Church or so that the, the Vatican pay for rent or pay for no, it's private. So when they differ, then Muslims they say, okay, we want to buy a church. Who want to donate to us, and money will come like rain. A lot of money. I remember when I decided to go and make a TV station many years ago, I think like 2010 maybe. We asked people to help us, nobody helped. There's only one person actually who sent a donation, as I remember. Maybe two, but nobody cared. But if I was a Muslim, Zakar Naik, he have at that time 12 satellites, and he go. Like his programs broadcast in 12 satellites, each satellite is different program, which means he have a 12 programs running in the same time. He have more than 600 employees. Do you remember the guy who called me just two days ago and he told me he left Islam and became a Christian and he was hired by the Ministry of Islam in Pakistan to promote spread Islam in Europe? You remember? It's a government sponsored. Qatar spend a lot of money. Saudi Arabia, they print a lot of Quran, brochures. Uh, they invite people for trips. We are talking about a massive amount of money. After all of this, they are afraid of someone like me. Like individual, he go online. He don't have an army. He don't have a secretary. He have, uh, you know, I mean, uh, a little computer, a screen. Uh, you know, I mean, what I have compared to what they have, nothing. Still, we always we see YouTube sending me complaint from the government of Pakistan. Legal complaint from the government. So imagine government are scared of our videos. This is why Islam is so weak. 
doesn't matter how much money they spend. A video like mine, this is very convincing. People leave us now. They can spend all the money. They can fool people, no problem. But that will not live for long. And you know, the most, most well-known thing about Islamic countries, that all of it is extremely corrupt. You see, in America, there is corruption for sure. Every country have a corruption. But if you are, you know, I mean, in, in the Middle East or in Islamic countries, as long you are in the in, in the power, it's extremely impossible to put someone in jail. In the West, it's not. Like now, we have many congressmen and senators are under investigation and they will go to jail. Joe Biden himself under investigation. Trump is under investigation. So in the West, that will not live for long. And Islamic countries, all of it is nothing but corruption. Islam could not make them, you know, have a better life or a better ethic. Islam corrupt them to the bone. <laughs> Can you explain Islamic view of the women hijab? Let me get some water, sorry. You know, the women hijab, uh, in, in the Quran, it doesn't say that women, they have to wear uh, something in their head. That's not true. That's not in the Quran. What is in the Quran is hijab. Hijab is not something you put in your hair or you cover yourself. Hijab is a curtain. <clears throat> and we can prove that in two seconds. If we go in the Quran right now and we type the word hijab, you will find that Allah himself, he speaks to people from behind the hijab. Behind. Not under. Hijab is a curtain. Chapter 7, verse number 40, uh, 45. Between them, there's a hijab. A hijab cannot be a veil you wear in your head. Hijab is a curtain to veil between you and other person. It's not something you wear. Let us continue. And we will go later to the hijab about the women. Chapter 17, verse number 45, is speaking about hijab too. We made between you and those who don't believe in the day of judgment, hijab and mastura. There's a curtain between you and them. All right? So again, the Quran confirms something about the hijab. You see the word curtain? You see it? Curtain. Curtain is not, hijab is not something at the top of you. It's between you and someone else. We continue. So this is chapter 17, verse number 45. Then chapter 19, verse number 17, supposedly about Mary, the mother of Jesus, which Quran called the name wrong again. He think the Quran think that Mary is a sister of Aaron, the brother of Moses, and Moses is the uncle of Jesus. That's because Muhammad is a fraud. Here it says, and she took, took a veil apart from them. <laughs> so what, what she did, she did hide herself from them. So what between her and them, there's a curtain again. She is hiding. She's not wearing a curtain. Because that will not hide her. They can still see her. So there's a hijab between her and them, which means they do not see her not a veil you wear in your in your head let us continue chapter 33 verse number 53 this is the only verse speaking about hijab for women read with me carefully it says that when you want to ask the wives of muhammad ask them from behind the curtain do you see the word curtain do you see it So what is the word hijab? Oh, do we have a conclusion now? What is the word hijab? Is the word hijab 
something we wear in our head or it's a curtain obviously it is a curtain Allah himself he speak from behind a hijab Allah himself speak from behind hijab so hijab is a curtain and never was something they put in the dress I told you just a story of the old woman she told me that they start wearing the veil on their head when the old man took the Arab land and they start kidnapping women and raping them otherwise hijab had nothing to do with covering your hair nowhere in the Quran it says cover your hair it's it's a big fat lie and actually it's not even a Muslim woman here it says this is about the wives of Muhammad This is about the wives of Muhammad. You want to speak to his wife, you speak to them from behind the hijab. Chapter 42, verse number 50, 51, it says, It's not for Allah to speak to anyone except from behind the curtain. Do Allah wear hijab? Is Allah a female? And he's hiding himself from men? So hijab here they translate as a veil. From behind, do you see the word behind? If you are wearing a veil, you are not behind it. The word in Arabic wara, wara mean behind an object. The object is not on you. You are not even touching the object. You are behind the object. So, uh, you know, when the Muslims they try to explain their religion, we laugh at them because simply we find it very funny that we are the Arab Christians. We know Islam way better than them. And did I say to you anything is not convincing? Isn't this what it says? Isn't it? Isn't all what I showed you is about something behind, 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 behind? Nowhere it says they wear hijab. Right? If it's uh, something we wear, I should say wear hijab, not behind. So everything we say, we prove it with clear reference. Muslims are a bunch of idiots, do not know their religion. I never saw a Muslim, he knew his religion. Have you? Have you seen a Muslim, he knew his religion? They don't. Muslim, they knew nothing about their religion. Is the video working fine in uh, uh, in Patreon? I'm uh, sorry, in uh, Rambo. Is everything going fine for you? I hope so. How is the the screen quality is good? You can read carefully, like good. <clears throat> All right. There is tons of things in you know Islam. Like when I used to study Islamic law, when I asked the the, the supposedly the professor, the second I put my hand up, he says, See, "Not me, not you again. Not I didn't have an answer for you. Just no, 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 sir. Just like, no, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't give me a question." Because the second he allowed me to, uh, to ask the question, he's in trouble. He don't even allow me to say a word of the question. They can't answer. Everything they say in the classroom does not agree with what the Quran is saying. Like, as an example, Muhammad, you do not know how to write, how to read. This is what the Muslim says. Every Muslim says to you, the Quran says, the Prophet Muhammad, he do not know. The Quran says where? Nowhere in the Quran says that. In fact, the Quran says that he is Ummi. Ummi does not mean illiterate about reading or, re or reading or writing. He is from the nations, from the word Umam. He's a Gomai. Ummi have nothing to do with being illiterate. 
The word Ummi is coming from the word Umam. As an example, in the Quran, there's a chapter 6, verse number 38 says that animals are nations like you. They are what? Nations like you. What the word nation? Umam. Illa umamun amthalakum. Umam is where the word Ummi coming from, from the nations. He's a stranger, he's not from us. So Ummi is someone not from a group, certain group. So now if we go to the Quran to check what the Quran is speaking about, someone he is Ummi, you will find that the Ummi is the one who don't have scriptures. The Jews, they call the one who is not a Jew, a Gomai, Ummi. <clears throat> which means he is not from the people of Israel he is not from the people of God specifically chapter 2 verse number 78 says and some day of, of them they are common folk not, not knowing the book very false translation by the way in Arabic it says from among them there is people who they are illiterate, they do not know the book. But I just said Ummiyin does not mean illiterate. Illiterate here mean that they are from the nations who they are ignorant about God. So illiteracy is about not knowing book of God and does not have book of God. If you change the translator, here we go. Muhammad Hilari and Muhammad Khan. You will see that Ummi, look at this, and this is false by the way, this is not about the Jews, because the Jews, they cannot be those. And there are among them, illiterate people who know not the book. But this is the word Ummi. So the word Ummi is not about you not knowing how to write, how to read. It's about not knowing the book of God. Pagan. Right? So, and there is tons of verses in the Quran saying the same thing. Chapter 3, verse number 20 says, Regarding those who dispute with you, Muhammad, tell them I be surrender, not surrender, surrender to Allah. And, uh, uh, and regarding those, who were given the scriptures and those who they are illiterate. Do you see the word illiterate? Okay, so look what the Quran did. The Quran is saying there's two kinds of a group. There's people who they are giving scriptures between two brackets, Jews and Christians. Those we cannot call them illiterate. Why? Because they have a book. They are not illiterate about God, which means they are not pagans. So there is a Christians and Jews who they are giving the book, those are not illiterate. And there is a people who they are illiterate, ummiyun, ummi, again. So what ummi mean? Even the Muslim translation saying Arab pagan. Do you see it? So when the Quran says Muhammad is ummi, Muhammad is a pagan. Are you with me? So Muhammad is Ummi because he's a pagan, not because he does not know how to write, how to read. This is again one of the most silly, stupid understanding of their book. They don't even know their book. All the evidence in the front of us take us to one thing. The word Ummi means pagan. A person do not know the book of God and he do not know God. Otherwise, it's very funny to say the Christians are not Ummiyin, which means they don't know, like, you know, all the Christian, nobody of them, all the Christian, they are educated, they knew how to write, how to read 1400 years ago. No way, you know. So you will notice that the one who is called Ummi is the one who is pagan, and all the Christians, they are not called Ummiyin or Ummi, they are called people of the scriptures. And here, this is another point we can use against the stupid Muhammad when they speak about our book is being corrupted. 
how our book is corrupted and the stupid Quran keep calling us the people of the scriptures. Like, you know, this uh, actor, his name is Kojak, he is bold. So imagine uh, we keep saying joke with uh, 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 Jack with the long hair. He lost his hair a long time ago. Is the guy is so bold. So uh, how we can call them people of the scriptures if they are, they lost the scriptures. Like, do they have it or they don't? So the Quran again and the Muslims is just like a chain of stupidity. You cannot call somebody, you cannot say to me, you are from the people of the scriptures, in the same time you say to me, you corrupt your book, you're stupid. You cannot say that. Either I have a scriptures, to be true scriptures, have to be not corrupted, or I don't have scriptures, then you cannot call me people of the scriptures. Are we learning? Don't forget to subscribe to our uh, uh, ramble. As you see, guys, we will go from now on for some time a ramble because YouTube is chasing us as usual, but we can do. I wasn't planning to come here today, so please subscribe and join us. Uh, make an account a ramble. It's for free. It doesn't cost you any money. Uh, do we have any Mohammedan would like to join us in Skype? Any Muhammad want to get me busted? Yeah, and about the Bible is corrupt, it's just another stupid thing. Because simply the Muslim they think that Allah supposedly sent the Bible. So if the Bible is corrupt, that means Allah could not protect the book he sent. So what's my problem? That is additional proof that Allah cannot be the God of the Bible. Because I have books, I wrote books, and nobody can corrupt my books. You corrupt my books, I can show you. I can talk you to court, I can cause you a big problem. How about God? Can't Allah save one copy of the Bible, which is not corrupted? It's just, uh, you know, same time the Quran keeps saying the Bible is not corrupt. However, we don't believe anything the Quran says. The Quran is just a mix of stupid stories. And Muhammad is a corrupt man he was trying to convince the christians that he believe in their god muhammad is the same as obama obama he go to the atheist meeting he make fun of the bible obama he go to israel he wear the hat of the jews and he pray in the front of the wall obama he go to a church he hold the bible he kiss the bible and he read verses from the bible so Obama with the gays, he's a gay. Obama with the transgender, he's a transgender. Obama with the Jews, he's a Jew. Obama with the Muslims, he's a Muslim. Obama with the Christian, he's a Christian. This is what Islam is about. Otherwise, Muhammad don't believe in one single word in the Bible about or about Jesus. Muhammad is a fraud. If you ever have a difficulty with the sound, just refresh your page. Any Mohammedan? Do we have any Mohammedan here? Who is a Mohammedan? He dared to join us live on air. Any Mohammedan dare to join us live on air? So maybe it's better to stop here to give you a chance for the rest. And, and don't forget, please, to share the link with your friends. Uh, and I will try to go live tomorrow here too. I will let you know in in, uh, in uh, Patreon. Again, when you come in uh, Rumble, uh, remember this. Uh, when you when we post like we are going to go live, it's different from YouTube. Under my name here, you will find a clock usually a countdown clock. Now you don't see it because we are live. But when we are offline still. Is going to show you how many hours left, how many minutes, and how many seconds. It's going to show you exactly the time, according to your clock, when we are going to live. So you will see that in each time we go live, before we go live, after we go live, this clock will disappear because there's no point of it. We are live. 
So always remember this. In, in YouTube is different. YouTube usually the clock will appear on the screen in the where the where the video will play. In Rumble is different. It's in the corner. And then to join the chat, you go to the right side, you click at the chat, and you will be able to join the chat. Remember, in order to do all of this to be part in the chat, you have to verify your account. You have to sign an account in Rumble, like any you know app in the world. You have to make an account, they send you a link, you confirm it, you verify it, and you will be able to participate. Uh, how you can help me to correct the book in the Bosnian language? Very easy. Put it in your computer and correct it. And send me the link again, I will publish it. If there is a mistake in the language, as you know, I did not translate the book. You know, people voluntarily, they translate to languages, and I'm thankful for them. You can do the same. You can correct them if your language skill is better. And uh, make it ready and send it to me. I will publish it. All right? And that goes for any translation I have for those books we publish for free. You know, as you know, I publish my books as a donation for all countries which they cannot afford to buy it like Indonesia, you know, Asia, uh, Russia, China. So all my books, which is given for free, if you are a person who speaks that language and you find that there is a cor uh, some correction, and I assume that you are being honest, I will give it to somebody else to check it after you send it to me to be sure that nothing, nobody playing games. And then if everything is fine, we publish it again. All right, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. I hope today we have a good time. And uh, remember, the good thing about Ramble, we do not need to delete videos. Uh, this is not YouTube where they can flag us and take us down easy. So always the, the video will be here. Uh, tell your friends that from now on, if you want to watch Christian Press, until we update you, you know, until the, we go back to YouTube, tell your friends that we will go on Ramble. Uh, and share the link with them. All right? And don't forget to subscribe so you can receive notification when I go live. And the best way always to get updated is to join Patreon so you will receive notification as soon as I post something in Patreon. All right? I have seen many saying Ramble is not available in their country. Maybe, but you know, I think everybody these days is using the, like those software, proxy software. I mean, use it, you know. It's just to change the IP of your location and you can join. Uh, as you see, I did not choose to come here, but they are chasing us. The dogs of YouTube are chasing us. You know, I'm, I'm the only one maybe in YouTube. Everybody have my videos, but I don't have my video, you know. This is how bad it is. Everybody download my videos, share my videos, put my videos, even make money from my videos. But I cannot keep my videos. Me, myself, I cannot. Imagine once, actually, YouTube, they send me a message saying to me that this video is taken down because you are using someone else's video. But this is my video. I'm a Christian prince. Imagine I downloaded my video from different channel. It was a debate. And I loaded the video in my channel. And I am a Christian prince. The stupid YouTube sent me a notification saying that this video been taken down for copyright. Who is the one who made copyright? Nobody. It was YouTube. I sent them. I said, this is me. I am a Christian prince. The whole video is a Christian prince. And I am a Christian prince. Still the potatoes, San Francisco people, they took it down. So imagine how bad it is. This is why you will find somebody is downloading my videos. He have maybe a thousand videos of Christian Prince. But Christian Prince, he don't even have 20 videos in his channel. What I can do? Our, our fight is not easy. They are targeting me because I am the guy. 
you download my videos, they don't care for you. They care that it is me. They are not stupid. No, they are not stupid. They are doing that on purpose. This is not about being stupid. They are evil, my friend. Do you think we do not know? I mean, the guy, his name is a Christian prince. His channel is a Christian prince. And they don't know. And I go live speaking. This is me, my voice. I mean, still they don't they think I am stealing the videos of Christian prince. Uh, but anyway, you know, we are always victorious. doesn't matter what they try. Uh, it's, it's, it's impossible to stop what we do. And Ramble, the good thing about it, that people anytime they can come back here and they can download the video and they can reshare it. And, you know, we hope that you guys will tell your friends too about uh, us coming here. And we hope that we will be able to accomplish maybe bigger, a bigger community from you too. You know, I want to, anyway, I want to say thank you all for being here. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will try actually to change the name from Arabian Prophet to Christian Prince Official, but I don't know if I can do that. I will see, and I will let you know if that was able to happen. Which means it's going to be the same address. Don't worry. But I will try to change the official name because I noticed there is many in Ramble. Uh, many account they are saying they call themselves christian prince archive christian prince short whatever you know so just to make it more clear all right so i want to say thank you all for being here may the lord bless you and this is your brother christian prince who is serving you humbly for today take care